Welcome back to the Muskogee History Course. This video is the final video covering the modern era. In 1979, the nation adopted a new constitution under the Oklahoma Indian Welfare Act. The new Muskogee Creek Nation Constitution continued the 1867 constitutional organization of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of the government with distinct separation of powers among the three. The current Constitution of 1979 was the first Constitution for the Muscogee Creek Nation since 1867. The principal chief has the authority to appoint an election board. Supreme Court members, College of Muscogee Nation's Board of Regents, and other tribal boards. The principal chief shall create and organize the executive office, prepare the annual budget, and administer appropriated funds. In accordance with the Constitution, Article 5, Section 4, principal chiefs are required to present a State of the Nation address each year. The National Council consists of one House and two representatives from each of the eight districts. Every bill shall have passed the National Council and be presented to the principal chief for approval before it becomes an ordinance. The judicial power of the nation is vested in the Supreme Court. All litigations between the tribal officers shall originate in the district court with the right of appeal to the Supreme Court. The Muscogee government is divided into three major branches as determined by the Constitution and are described as follows. The legislative branch, the legislative branch is composed of the National Council of the Muscogee Creek Nation and oversees the proposed legislation. The executive branch includes the office of principal chief, second chief, tribal administrator, and chief of staff who oversee the daily operations of the tribe. The judicial branch is divided into two court levels, including the Muscogee Creek Nation District Court and Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the nation's highest court with original jurisdiction over challenges to the Constitution of the Muscogee Creek Nation and appellate jurisdiction over cases appealed from the District Court. The Supreme Court is the final authority on the Constitution and laws of the Muscogee Creek Nation. In 1982, the tribe passed an ordinance allowing tribal courts to enforce criminal and civil jurisdiction over tribal members and subsequently sought funding from the BIA for the tribal courts and a law enforcement program. Funding denied by the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Interior resulting in Muscogee Creek Nation versus Howdell cited the OIWA, any recognized tribe or band of Indians residing in Oklahoma shall have the right to organize for its common welfare and to adopt a constitution and bylaws. The Creek Nation retain its court system. For a more detailed description of the organizational structure of the Muscogee Creek Nation governmental branches, please consult the PowerPoint presentation. The differences in 1867 and the 1979 Constitution are listed on this particular slide. In 1867 Constitution, the commission consisted of two elected males from each tribal town, as compared to the 1979 Constitution, which has a commission consisted of five appointed tribal members. You can see in the 1867 Constitution that the representation of all tribal towns was involved. They had a bicameral form of legislature with the House of Kings and the House of Warriors, and only males over 18 could vote, and the first elected chief of the Muscogee Nation was elected. But the 1979 Constitution has representatives from geographic regions rather than towns and a tripartite form of government, single body legislature. All citizens over 18 were able to vote and in 1980 the first elected National Council since 1903. The principal chiefs since 1971 included Principal Chief Claude Cox who pursued a course of tribal sovereignty to consolidate Muscogee Creek Nation status as a self-governing entity. And in 1972, the first tribal programs were opened in the Oakdale School, south of Oakmulgee on Highway 75. Later in 1974, a tribal complex was built on the northern edge of Oakmulgee on Highway 75. This era saw the opening of several bingo halls, creation of numerous tribal departments, such as housing, 
education, employment, and light horse police. In the 1970s, the Muscogee Nation News and the Creek Festival were originated to provide regular communications with tribal members and to organize an annual celebration for Muscogee Nation. The Muscogee Nation began operating its own hospital in Okima through an arrangement with the Okima Hospital Trust Authority. And in 1981 and 82, the Creek Nation assumed control of health services from the Indian Health Services and all programs previously run by the BIA. In 1983, the Office of Public Gaming was created. The idea for the chartered communities was conceptualized in early 1970 to promote local community development and later in, and later in 1983, a process for the tribal government to sanction. Muscogee Community Organizations was approved by the National Council. Beginning in the 1980s, the National Council recognized the important place of ceremonial grounds and churches in Creek society by providing funds for maintenance and development. These things were accomplished during Chief Claude Cox's administration. And in 1990, the BIA declares Thoplaco, Kaleji, and Alabama Quasardi to be sovereign entities. The contracting of services from the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service, which was facilitated by PL 93638, the Indian Self-Determination Act, and PL 100-472, the self-governance, enable the Muscogee Nation to determine its service priorities for such programs as education, social services, law enforcement, and realty. And in 1991 to 1995, Principal Chief Bill Fife convened a meeting between the leaders of the tribal governments and the tribal towns. In 1993, for the first time in the 20th century, a meeting was held between the elected chief and traditional Mikos. The tribal complex was expanded to include more government services as well as obtaining federal funds for community buildings. The State of the Nation excerpts say, in 1992, the first year of my administration reaffirmed what we should expect in our relationship with the state. Oklahoma challenged our sovereignty and we stood our ground. Building our economy must start right here at the Capitol, in the council chambers, and in the executive board. We must set our own economic priorities for the management of our tribal income and expenditures. Chief Bill Five completed a strategic plan for the nation. In 1993, the tobacco tax stamps were approved. There was a standoff at Duck Creek at the trading post on US 75 north of Oatmulgee. A tribal transport vehicle followed by the State Highway Patrol pulled into the Duck Creek trading post parking lot to avoid seizure of cigarettes that were being transported. Chief Perry Beaver's administration from 1996 to 2003, he helped extend the tax commission responsibilities to include individual tribal license tags. He initiated discussions with OSU to create a tribal college to provide continuing and higher education for tribal employees, which opened in 2004. He completed construction of an office building in Muskogee to lease to the BIA area office and completed construction on the tribal plaza in Oatmulgee and Muskogee. In 2004 through 2011, Principal Chief A.D. Ellis signed the law to establish the College of the Muskogee Nation and appointed the first Board of Regents. He signed a gaming compact with the state of Oklahoma a constitutional convention was convened in 2008 and 2009 to provide for a referendum to amend the Constitution. Some of the major amendments included the number of council representatives and protection of cultural sites. A total of 11 amendments were approved by the Creek voters. The governing structure for the housing division was changed from a state corporation to a tribal independent agency to provide for more tribal control. During A.D. Ellis's administration also, they purchased the original Creek Council House, which was located in downtown Oatmulgee. 
the council held its regular meeting at this location as a symbolic gesture to signify the return of the Creek Nation. In 2012 to the present, Principal Chief George Tiger reestablished ties with traditional leaders and began a program to diversify economic development activities, including a shopping center and golf course. He emphasized the redevelopment of the Intertribal Council of the Five Civilized Tribes, and a tobacco tax compact was signed with the state of Oklahoma on August the 24, 2012. A strategic plan and a semi-annual report were completed for the tribe, and Chief Tiger delivered his State of the Nation address on January the 28, 2012. In 1979, the citizens voted on and adopted a constitution that we are still governed by today. In this administration, we established and welcomed the nation's first cabinet, consisting of top leaders of the executive branch specializing in different areas of tribal programs and services. We are one of the few tribal governments to form this type of structure pattern after a U.S. presidential government. In this new era, year 2013, we've seen many changes. We've seen the soil turn and the framework go up at the new Student Activity Center at the College of the Muscogee Nation. The first structural insulated panels, or SIPs, home in Okmulgee went up. It's designed for comfort and lower utilities. Housing also put around 50 families into new homes. That's more than any other year prior to this one. The expansion of Phase 2 of River Spirit was announced. A $365 million investment set for construction on the banks of the Arkansas River. Then we move to the health of our nation, one of this administration's most important initiatives. This year alone, we acquired the Okmulgee Memorial Hospital attained the George and I Rehabilitation Center, launched a new mobile unit to travel to remote areas to provide immediate health screenings, and the announcement of the new hospital to be built in Okima. Traveling in Creek Country hasn't always been easy or pleasant. Our roads and transportation department stepped up, giving us almost 400 miles of new roads. That's more area of roads covered than any other time period combined before this administration. These are just a few of our accomplishments that our programs and services have provided. Not doing it any other way, but the Muskogee way, paving the way one day at a time. This is the conclusion of the Muskogee Creek Nation History Course. We would like to thank Dr. Wayne Johnson for reading the historical documents for our video. Mado 